Uganda's financial sector, worth 11 trillion shillings, is having to deal with the business environment of slow-down activities to economically rebound. It's not a secret that any time you have an election, yeah, people tend to sort of hold back and see what's going to happen. Um, so we're happy and we're looking forward to making up because first quarter is going to be tight because we had so many holidays and etc. Um, but we, we're very positive that we'll make up for that lost ground in the next three quarters. A cross-section of financial service providers, however, are looking towards planning with the relative stability of the local currency, the exchange market, as well as the rate of inflation. Because the inflation risk has been taken care of, we thought inflation was going to be in the double digits by now. It's less than seven. Currency is holding, 33 unchanged. Um, rates are coming down. There's good momentum. We saw a dramatic drop in the, in the yield curve. We had a three and a five year bond auction a week after the election, and it dropped. Both those, uh, year, those tenors dropped by about 500 basis points, from 24% to roughly 18 Patrick Mahire, the Stambik Bank's managing director, was speaking on the sidelines of the unveiling of a new smart banking product that seeks to leverage an ICT innovation to grow customer traffic. Some of the you know, hangover effects of being in a pre-election year where a lot of decisions were being postponed till after the elections are beginning to be made. Um, we also saw a lot of foreign interest come into the last bond auction. So it does seem that you know, momentum is starting to build and we're going back into doing business as usual. Banks are now having to deal with opportunities for expansion from the telecommunication front, given the existing 19 million subscribers, many of which are already enjoying some form of financial services like mobile money.